Welcome to Storytime at Mount Rushmore. My name is Debbie with the Mount Rushmore Society, and I'll be reading Who Carved the Mountain? The Story of Mount Rushmore. These are the Black Hills of South Dakota. From far away, these hills look black, but up close, they're dark green. They are covered with thick forests of spruce and ponderosa pine. Some of the hills look like mountains. Huge cliffs of granite burst from the slopes. Tall rocks called needles point to the sky. High in this land, you'll see the faces of four United States presidents. Why were they carved? To represent our country. How were they carved? With dynamite and determination. This is the story of Mount Rushmore. These are the voices of its people. Doan Robinson. My name is Doan Robinson. I am the man who had the plan to carve heroes on a mountain. I love the Black Hills of South Dakota. I wish that people that across the land would come to see their beauty. I thought of a plan, a wonderful plan. The needles could be carved. I imagined huge statues of Western heroes, Buffalo Bill, Chief Red Cloud, Lewis and Clark, and Sacagawea. So I wrote to a sculptor and told him my plan to carve heroes on a mountain. Who was this sculptor? Gutson Borglum. My name is Gutson Borglum. I am the sculptor who changed the plans and took charge of the art on the mountain. No needles or Western heroes for me. I wanted to carve four presidents. I chose a mountain, a granite mountain, that faced the morning sun. On Rushmore's colossal cliff, I would carve a memorial to the country I loved. Nothing would stand in my way. So I created models of the presidents as I took charge of the art on the mountain. Who were the presidents I chose? George Washington. My name is George Washington. Borglum chose me for the mountain. During the Revolutionary War, I led our fight for freedom. I helped form a nation, an independent nation. Our people created a democracy. I continued to lead our country with care when I was elected as president. I re represent the birth of the United States. That's why Borglum chose me for the mountain. Thomas Jefferson. My name is Thomas Jefferson. Borglum chose me for the mountain. When I was president, I helped purchase the vast Louisiana territory. We expanded the land and explored the land. Our country doubled in size. Our nation then stretched to the west and reached the Rocky Mountains. I represent the growth of the United States. That's why Borglum chose me for the mountain. Abraham Lincoln. My name is Abraham Lincoln. Borglum chose me for the mountain. When I was president, slavery divided the people. The northern states fought the southern states, but I held our country together. I believed in freedom for all as I looked ahead to the future. I represent the preservation of the United States. That's why Borglum chose me for the mountain. Theodore Roosevelt. My name is Theodore Roosevelt. Borglum chose me for the mountain. When I was president, I began the Panama Canal. The Atlantic Ocean met the Pacific Ocean with a 50-mile pathway of water. Our ships would use the shortcut to travel across the world. I represent the development of the United States. That's why Borglum chose me for the mountain. Who helped Borglum carve these faces? The Pointer. I am the Pointer. I made marks on the mountain. First, I worked in Borglum's studio. I measured the models of the presidents and multiplied each number by 12. I loved the math, the complicated math. The mouths would be 18 feet wide. Next, I climbed Mount Rushmore. With a pointing machine and a paintbrush, I marked measurements on the rock. The workers knew exactly where to drill because I made marks on the mountain. Who drilled the holes in the mountain? The driller. I am the driller. I drilled long holes in the mountain. Each morning, I tighten my harness, take a deep breath, and walk backwards off the mountain. 
I hung from a cable, a thin steel cable. I leaned against the sky. The sun was hot, the dust was sharp. My jackhammer weighed 85 pounds. I created a place for the dynamite as I drilled long holes in the mountain. Who was in charge of the dynamite? The powder man. I am the powder man. I blasted rock off the mountain. At first my work was quiet. I cut the sticks of dynamite and loaded them into the holes. Then noontime, boom, four o'clock, boom, crash, smash, thud. Twice each day I fired the blast. I shaped the heads with explosions, but I needed help with the details after I blasted rock off the mountain. Who carved the details on the faces? The stone carver. I am the stone carver. I carved details on the mountain. I drilled rows and rows of shallow holes, then broke off the rock with a chisel. With a small jackhammer and a four-star bit, I smoothed the rough surface of the faces. Their stone expressions became human expressions as I followed Borglum's commands. I was sculpting the faces that would shine through the years to honor democracy and freedom. But Borglum grew older and his son took over as I carved details on the mountain. Who was Borglum's son? Lincoln Borglum. I am Lincoln Borglum. I am the boy who became the man who completed the work on the mountain. On March 6, 1941, my father, Gutson Borglum, died. I looked at the unfinished mountain. I thought of his dream, his far-reaching dream, to show America to the future. So I led the faithful workers. We smoothed the skin on Roosevelt's face and the waves on Jefferson's hair. We sculpted the side of Lincoln's head and finished Washington's collar. I kept my father's dream alive as I completed the work on the mountain. Who shares this dream? We the people. We the people, we share the dream of the mountain. We come from all places to visit the faces that look across the land. We think about our history. We think about our democracy. We are thankful for our freedom. Our faces join their faces as we look to the future. We are the people of the mountain. If you would like Who Carved the Mountain for your very own, please go to mountrushmoresociety.com. Thank you.